Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have a question right here on the board. And the question reads, um, mind you, I will be collecting data as I will be reading the, the question. Well, a car skids on an ice tarred road when the brakes are applied, okay? The initial speed of the car is 20 meters per second and is observed to travel a distance of 115 meters before coming to rest. Determine the coefficient of friction between the road and the car. So this is what I uh, think is happening. So you have your car somewhere here. You have your car somewhere here. Uh, it's said to have skid. This is the road. So we want to assume that probably maybe from this point up to this point. That's where we have 115 meters. Ne? From this point up to this point. So this car is skidding when the brakes are applied. Which means right now as the brakes are uh, got applied the car will start to move on uh, the effect only for the friction now force therefore the traction or the force of pulling by the engine will be zero therefore the force of pulling by the engine that we can call F will become zero the only force that will be acting on the car is the force of friction this one here that I'm going to indicate as FR okay so this car it's going to move under the influence of friction until it stops at this point and that's when they said since it's going to stop the final velocity will become zero and they gave us the initial velocity which we can call U uh, it's 20 meters per second right like this so this car the driver is applying brakes somewhere here so the moment he applies the brakes it means there is no longer a force that is pulling the car towards the engine is no longer pulling the car the only force that is acting on the car is the frictional force as well as the normal force which I can call FN and remember this is a car it has got a weight that it is exerting uh, due to gravity so this is what you expect okay so now the question uh, goes on and say determine the coefficient of friction between the road and the car so for you now to be able to do that you need to know the summation of all forces in X remember this thing is going to the X axis so summation of all forces acting in X is equal to F minus frictional force and this must give us M A X this A X simply means the acceleration in the horizontal axis but since we said the moment the brakes are applied there is no longer the force applied by the engine therefore this F is zero so you have something like zero minus frictional force is equal to m a x okay uh, again if we look now for summation of all the forces in y so summation of forces acting in y we have a normal force which i represented as fn if we subtract the force that is going down which is the weight na, which is mg we expect to, to have zero y because this car is not going up or down it's fixed as far as the y-axis is concerned okay so from this one now you can get that uh normal force is equal to weight is it right uh another equation that i'm going to introduce i think all of us knows that the frictional force frictional force is given by mu times normal force we know this frictional force is equal to mu 
times that okay um, so this equation must be known this one it must be known right so in trying to solve this equation that's when we can be able to get our mu which is what the question is asking us to look for but there is further information that is provided here that can assist us in getting acceleration in x-axis because we know for a fact that this car had to stop at this point so we need to know as to how much was it in terms of acceleration before the car uh, was brought to a halt or before the car stopped at this position so we have to look for that so in order for us to be able to look for acceleration we need a formula that will combine final velocity the displacement as well as the initial velocity and the suitable formula for that is this one v squared is equal to u squared plus 2 a s where v is zero according to the information that we have uh, is equal to u it's 20 meters per second then we square that plus 2 uh, we don't know the value of a but we know s as 115 meters like this so we can take this to the other side 20 squared is equal to minus remember if we take this to this side ne? one of these has to be a negative it's either you take this you put it to this side then it becomes negative or you take this to the other side and it's going to be negative so you choose which one you want to make negative there so you have your uh let me just find the the total there so 115 times 2 that's 230 ne? so it's going to be negative 230 a like this 20 squared that's 400 is equal to negative 230 a so if you divide both sides by 230 divided by 230 you find then that your acceleration is negative negative what uh, so we have 400 divided by 230 it's negative 1.74 1.74 meters per second squared so ladies and gentlemen this is the acceleration at which the car was traveling before it stopped at this point so now that we have this acceleration if we come back now to this formula of ours which says uh frictional force so it's negative frictional force zero minus so we can take off or we can ignore the zero so we have negative frictional force is equal to m a x of which this is the a x that we are talking about that's the acceleration in the x axis now uh since here you can see that we have frictional fo uh, force we also have a frictional force here so in other words a frictional force can be written as mu f n so since we are equating to a frictional force here i want to put mu fn in place of frictional force so i'm just going to put since there is a negative already bracket mu f n remember this is representing frictional force this is what is going to be equal to a max like this okay i'm sure we're still together here now I'm going to put the values, right? Um, negative mu in place of Fn. Here we are told that Fn is equal to mg, which is equal to weight. So I'm going to write mg in place of Fn is going to be equal to m. In place of a, we have a here. But remember, this is negative. So there should be a negative somewhere. Uh, okay, just to make it a little bit nice, I'm going to put a negative here. Then I'll put my M in place of A, I'll put 1.74, like this. I'm sure it's visible. Right, so you and I, we can both see that M is appearing both sides. You have M here, you have M here. So M and M, they cancel each other. Then a negative sign and a negative sign. 
they cancel each other so uh from what we have now sorry i left something here since i said um all right it's fine it's fine everything is said so here you can see that you have mu mg is equal to 1.74 so i'm going to rub to erase this part so that we can have a little bit of space to be able to finish up our problem so we have mu g is equal to 1.74 like this the question is asking us to calculate mu so we make uh, mu subject of the formula by dividing by g outside therefore mu is equal to 1.74 divided by for the sake of this question let's use g as 10 meters per second squared let's use our g as 10 meters per second squared acceleration due to gravity let's use our g as that so we put our 10 here so if we divide 10 into that you get uh, okay let's just say divided by 10 it must be easy you get 0 0.7 0 0.1 0 0.174 that's your acceleration so at the end of the day you have got your mu which is the acceleration due to gravity so let me know if you guys have any problem but this is what the question is asking you to look for. Thank you.